Welcome, sleepy traveler. It's time to leave your worries where the wind can take them and prepare to embark on a journey of blossoms. A story written in petals. We are at the walled gates of an ancient park in the Japanese city of Kyoto. It is spring, a season of rebirth, when the sakura trees are in bloom. The air grows cloudy with flurries of pink and white petals that catch every breeze. This awe-inspiring spectacle of nature draws people from far and wide. Tonight, we will walk with Hanako, a thoughtful university student contemplating her future. As she takes a long journey under the falling cherry blossoms, Hanako will not be alone. The teachings of her ancestors and mystical figures from Japanese mythology will guide her. The wildlife, culture and serene setting of Maruyama Park will help Hanako calm her flurried thoughts. Perhaps it will do the same for you. For now, let yourself Snuggle deeper into your mattress as you close your eyes. Take a deep breath of the fresh scent of flowers. And exhale all your worries. The sun is beginning to set. So let's go for a walk under the drifting blanket of cherry blossom petals in Kyoto. The traffic light turned red. Hanako stopped. The toes of her running shoes hung off the edge of the sidewalk. She was a bit annoyed because she had missed the green light. Usually, She did not miss this one. She walked this route twice a day between her university and home. Hanako knew the exact timing of these lights and her walking speed. Engineers must be precise, Hanako thought. She always made this crosswalk with ease, but she had been slowed down by the sakura fans. A single sakura tree hung above the intersection. It dangled its gnarled arms over the stone wall that hunched around an old traditional house. Even though the air was calm, a steady trickle of white and pink cherry blossoms filled the sky with their aimless wanderings. They clouded the sky with a shroud of what looked like flickering rose snowflakes. A couple behind Hanako ooed and aahed and took pictures of the falling petals. Every spring, people flocked to Kyoto from not only across Japan, but from around the world. The cherry blossoms that lined Kyoto's streets and parks drew them here. Hanako rarely minded the crowds of what she called Sakura fans. But when they made her miss a light, that was a different story. But she smiled. Hanako knew that missing a light wasn't a real problem. She was thankful for having such a trivial matter to fret about. The clock in Hanako's mind was ticking off the seconds before the light turned green again. Forty-one, forty, thirty-nine. She recited 
an engineering formula in her head. May as well use these 36 seconds to help me study for my exam tomorrow, she thought. Hanako only had one more exam to complete, and then her university degree would be finished. She would finally be an engineer. After that, well, that was the big question. What came after that? As Hanako continued the traffic light countdown, mumbling math equations to herself, she noticed several cherry blossom petals falling past the red traffic light. When they lingered in front of the light, they turned bright pink, backlit by the gleaming red. It reminded Hanako of the way the sunlight looked through the ears of her childhood dog, Hoshi. Hoshi was a beagle who had extra large floppy ears. Hanako smiled and closed her eyes halfway. She pictured herself playing with Hoshi's ears. When she was younger, she would hold them out like wings and pretend that they were flying through the house together. Hoshi was a calm and patient dog and had never minded when Hanako played with his ears. A breath of wind hushed past the intersection, heavy with the sweet promise of spring. A fresh puff of petals cascaded down. A flickering white veil of lace descended over the street. Hanako inhaled the fragrant air, then closed her eyes and thought deeper about Hoshi. She caught herself saying the words, Light through pink petal. It was the first line of a haiku poem. Thinking and speaking in haikus for everyday events was a habit Hanako had picked up in elementary school. This was thanks to her teacher, Mrs. Matsui. She taught her students to use the traditional Japanese poems as a way of distilling thoughts into their simplest form. Just three short lines of five, seven, and five syllables. Simplifying her thoughts was something Hanako had not done for some time. She was so consumed by her studies. Her mind was a cyclone of numbers and facts, constantly spinning. Light through pink petal brings warm beagle memory. Hanako spoke the words louder. The wind picked up and made the crooked branches clack against the stone wall. There were still twenty seconds before the light turned green. Plenty of time to finish the haiku. Light through pink petal brings warm beagle memory. What's the last line, she mused. The tide of cherry blossom petals increased as a fresh burst of perfumed wind gusted down the street. Hanako shielded her eyes. She could barely see through the storm of airborne confetti. Ten seconds left. Light through pink petal brings warm beagle memory. Best dog, my Hoshi. Yes, that was the haiku. Hanako smiled again and opened her eyes. 
It was not her best work, but not a terrible haiku for a 45-second traffic light. The unexpected moment added some buoyancy to her mood. Her footsteps were lighter as she stepped into the petal-speckled crosswalk, just as the light turned green. Hanako's thoughts still weighed her down. One more exam and then it was all done. She couldn't process the magnitude of that fact. She knew she should feel a satisfaction and elation at the successful completion of such a major milestone. Instead, she was already looking down the road. She was worried about what unknown roadblocks may loom in her way. Hanako looked down a side road and caught an iconic glimpse of her city. Kyoto Tower's red light blinked proudly against the backdrop of the urban skyline. The sky was starting to turn the color of chalk. Rolling purple mountains were visible in the background. Walking east on Sanjo Dori Street through the falling cherry blossoms, Hanako was deep in thought. She was already well into the process of fretting over her short list of internships, let alone other considerations that were further down the road. Where would she work? Did she want to move to a new city and away from her parents to secure a good job? Her thoughts were as busy as the sidewalks. The footpaths were becoming increasingly crowded with Sakura fans as she drew closer to Maruyama Park. Hanako's racing thoughts and pace were interrupted again by another streetlight turning red. Another missed light. This would put Hanako an extra minute late at getting home. One less minute to study and to narrow her search for internships. This intersection was adorned with more sakura trees than the last. With a whoosh, a living wind swept through and provoked an instant blizzard of twinkling petals. Hanako's whole world became a fragrant snowstorm. The gust that swirled the blossoms carried with it the familiar smell of the farm fields and the clear mountain streams beyond them. Something stirred inside of Hanako. It was a fuzzy memory from a part of her mind that had been long dormant from a time before she'd started university. She looked up at the chaos of petals around her, filling the sky. The sensation rocked her, slowed her down. Beautiful petals danced through the air like a murmuration of mystical glowing pink starlings. Together, they created an experience far greater than the sum of its individual parts. Usually, Hanako would take a small road at this intersection to bypass Maruyama Park. The shortcut would save her almost five minutes especially now that the cherry blossom crowds were gathering at the park. The light turned green, but Hanako's feet did not move. She looked at the park gates and wondered, when was the last time I visited? I used to spend hours beyond those walls when I was younger. Her internal timer kept ticking. Only ten seconds left to cross the street 
and get to the shortcut. Hanako gazed up. She noticed that the blue daytime had surrendered to the pastels of dusk. A peachy color was staining the view, spreading around Mount Takusan from the western horizon. It looked to Hanako as though some forgetful giant had spilled their cup of persimmon tea in the sky. She watched the warm tones spread almost imperceptibly. The bony limbs of the cherry blossom trees that swayed above her framed the spectacle of the horizon. Hanako's feet surprised her by turning away from the shortcut. They walked her right to the walls of Maruyama Park. The shortcut could wait. Something about the way the petals floated in the dusk sky. It was a familiar memory, a promise, an invitation. She needed to follow that feeling. She walked towards the gate. Hanako caught herself speaking the words to another haiku. It tumbled from her lips without her bidding. Small decision changed. Maruyama calls to me, following my feet. Hanako approached the park's entrance on Jingu Mishi Dori Avenue. This small gate was tucked away in the quiet northwest corner of the park. Before walking through the time-worn gate, she took a moment to take in the simple yet elegant work that had gone into its construction. As a future engineer, Hanako always appreciated the craftsmanship of her city's architecture. She guessed that the interwoven wooden beams were joined using the traditional sashimono technique without the use of a single metal nail. The tiled roof looked like dragon skin to her. Its blue-gray tiles interlocked in a scaly armor. Jagged Morikuni adornments hung proudly from the roof's edges and protruded like large dragon's claws. The decorative Katsuoji filials along the top of the roof looked very much like a dragon's spine to Hanako. Hanako decided she was not looking at a gate, but rather at a slumbering Mitsuchi. Mitsuchi were the mighty water dragons that lurked through the turbulent waves of Japanese mythology. Hanako knew every scale and tooth of the Mitsuchi, thanks to her grandmother. As a child, Hanako would spend long, quiet evenings perched on her grandmother's lap, captivated by the myths and legends of ancient time. She would fall asleep with thoughts of mythical creatures and fantastic deities swirling around her. During the day, she would try to capture their essence by filling notebooks with elaborate drawings of their likeness. Hanako touched the solid wooden beams as she went through the gate and whispered a haiku to the dragon above her. Tired water dragon, Mitsuchi slumbers above alive in our myths. Hanako smiled to herself. The ticking clock in her head was quieter. She took in the swirl of blossoms. Her mind began to empty, to declutter. New, softer thoughts fluttered in like spinning petals as she walked under the beautiful trees of the park. Once she had started university, 
Hanako had forgotten all about cherry blossom season. She used to count the days on the large paper bank calendar that hung on the wall at her parents' house. But she had not done that for some time. How long had it been since she had looked forward to the falling petals or had even noticed them? Hanako thought back to this time last spring. It had also been final exams week for the spring semester. She must have been studying at the library till after dark. But weren't there trees along my route home? Why can't I remember last year's cherry blossoms? Maybe because I took a shortcut, went down a lane, bypassed the blossoms to save five minutes each way. Or perhaps I took the bus and used every minute of the ride to study, spent the whole time with my nose in my books. I missed all the falling petals. Hanako turned a corner past some hedges and saw the Shorinin temple in the distance across a tree-dotted field. It was lit from within with an orange glow. There were soft blue lights sprinkled on the ground around it as if it came out of a fantasy movie. People gathered in front of the thousand-year-old building in quiet reverence. They were akin to shadows, blurred spirits huddled around the temple. From afar, the ancient temple looked unreal, like a dollhouse, or under the constant flurry of flower petals, maybe it was the centerpiece of a snow globe, a tiny perfect scene, a snapshot from an enchanted world. Instead of approaching the temple, Hanako kept wandering south, weaving through the grounds of Maruyama Park. She let the winding footpaths lead the way. Hanako was struck by the profound silence in the park. No more traffic sounds. No car horns. There were small groups of people gathered under the trees, but most were silent or speaking in hushed tones. The branches of the sakura trees linked overhead, and Hanako found herself walking through a tunnel of swirling petals. She held both hands up as she walked and let the blossoms tickle her fingertips. She felt like she was wading through a warm and wonderful dream. A familiar piercing whistle sounded in the distance. The bird song rose and warbled and hung like a question on the heavy spring air. Branches twitched as a bird darted from limb to limb. Hanako and her childhood friends had named these little brown birds wind whistle birds, but she now knew they were called bush warblers. To hear their liquid song under the cherry blossoms meant that winter was over. The rebirth of spring was well underway. When a small path split away from the main one, Hanako followed her feet again. She would take the proverbial road less travelled. There were almost no people on this narrow route. She wondered how old these stones were. Who had laid them all those centuries ago? How many feet have walked this path? How many people had come this way before her? The stone path meandered this way and that 
through the park. It snaked past several ponds and around great clumps of unruly bushes. Hanako stopped by a pond and sat on a comfortable old bench. The surface of the water was mostly covered in small lily pads and a dusting of white flower petals. Still, Hanako could see a pair of golden koi fish swimming just below the surface. She remembered parts of what her grandmother had taught her about the koi. The memory was patchy, but she recalled her grandmother explaining how koi was symbolic of brave samurai warriors. She wondered if the fish beneath the water at her feet had been samurai in a past life. Hanako watched them nose calmly through the water. They pushed aside some lily pads, then faded away towards the far end of the pond. The old wooden bench was so comfortable. Hanako imagined it had been made just for her. As she stared at the pond, Hanako's mind went silent. She heard a different Kyoto, one she had not heard for some time. Inside the walls of Maruyama Park, Hanako heard nature again. Crickets awoke and began their nocturnal lullabies from every direction. The bushes behind Hanako rustled and a pair of black and white magpies flew past, chuckling to one another. They bounced through the branches and fed on the bounty of cherry blossoms overhead. Hanako knew that these birds would be busy eating the fruit these trees would produce in a month's time. A magical memory came to Hanako. She had discovered a magpie nest in a sakura tree in this very corner of the park as a child. Every day after school, she had watched from a safe distance as the adult magpies raised their young. They would bring the screeching nestlings food in never-ending relays, watching for danger. Finally, later in the summer, the scruffy fledglings left the nest to fend for themselves. She wondered if these birds were descendants of the ones she had observed so many seasons ago. Another haiku tumbled from Hanako's lips. Happy magpies laugh. Pink cherry trees their home. Koi fish swim below. Fragments of a magpie legend her grandmother had taught her came to Hanako. Something about magpies forming a bridge across a river of stars which allowed star-crossed lovers to reunite in the heavens. That story had always made Hanako smile. She could see her grandmother waving her arms around like magpie wings as she told the story. She had learned so many things at her grandmother's knee. A frog rasped reluctantly from somewhere at the back of the pond, where the reeds formed a dark labyrinth. This was the first frog Hanako had heard this year. A lucky Kairu. She knew frogs represented good fortune and safe returns, So Hanako thanked the frog. Tomorrow's exam seemed less daunting now that she had the luck of a kairu on her side. Hanako's eyelids felt heavy. She was tired, but in a comfortable way. Just then, another formula started writing itself in the air, and Hanako grudgingly knew she had to memorize it. 
she knew she had to get home to finish studying, but Hanako couldn't help but feel there was something more important to do here. A single petal fell past Hanako's face, and her eyes followed it. The petal stood out from those around it because of its color. It was dark pink. She looked closer. No, it was red. She had never seen a red cherry blossom petal before. The other petals fell at a relaxed, slow flutter, but this crimson petal raced down in a sharp arc, dancing through the air with ease, like it had a mind of its own. Hanako was transfixed by the wild petal. When the red petal came close to the ground, Hanako waited for it to land on the speckled carpet of fallen petals, but it did not fall. It swooped low over the path and coasted along on an invisible current of wind. This petal seemed almost intelligent, as if driven by its own mysterious wind. It approached a rock floating just above the ground, then swept back up. It was caught on a stiff breeze. This shook loose a new squall of petals from the flower-heavy branches that hung above the pond. The red petal swooped further upwards through the flurry to Hanako's amazement. Then... It curved past her face and dove back towards the earth on a graceful track. Is that petal my guardian angel? Oh, maybe I'm too tired. Hanako could picture Mrs. Matsui teaching Hanako's class about the tenin a guardian angel spirit in Japan. Tenin were usually beautiful women wearing long flowy kimonos and scarves. Hanako remembered being captivated by an illustration in a school book of a shape-shifting tenin. She wore a feathered kimono as she flew through the skies above the peak of Mount Fuji where she lived. Her hair ribbons flowed through the clouds behind her. She made Hanako feel powerful, proud, and safe. Yes, that petal is my tenin, my good luck totem, Hanako decided. Perhaps, if she found it, she could keep it in her wallet to bring her more good luck on her exam. Hanako searched the ground where she saw the red petal land. So many cherry blossom petals were sweeping past, Hanako could not see a foot in front of her face. The roiling chaos of the petals around her mesmerized her. She felt her mind unclench. The ticking clock of her organized mind went softer. All she could hear was the sound of the wind in the trees, the rattling of branches, the flutter of countless tiny petals whispering against her ears like a restless flock of spectral butterflies. Hanako had always loved butterflies. Her thoughts wandered again to the folk stories about the butterfly goddess she had heard while sitting on her grandmother's lap. Izana Miko Kami was a powerful figure in the Japanese creation myth. Hanako could see the butterfly goddess clearly. The haiku came easily this time. Hanako recited it in one breath, like she had known it her whole life. Butterfly goddess, 
is a Nami no Kami, wings made of petals. Thinking in haiku was getting easier for Hanako. She found it soothing, a change of pace for her thoughts, a simplification, a cleansing. It pushed her worries to the side, quieted the ticking. Hanako opened her eyes and looked at the constellation of petals on the ground. Where had the red petal gone? She was about to give up when she spotted it at her feet. She picked it up and placed it in her palm as if it were a living creature. It was beauty itself, a perfect thing. It seemed to glow in her hand, perhaps illuminated by the brick dust skies of the dusk above. Hanako held the red petal close to her face. She studied its gentle curve, the gradient between pink and white at the edges, the exquisite, subtle scent. She held it up to the light of a trail lamp, close in front of her eye. It was like looking through cloudy, colored glass. Hanako held on to the petal for a while. She thought about pressing it into a book. That way, she could preserve it and hold this memory forever close to her. But Hanako knew she would not keep this petal. She could not. It was not hers to keep. She closed her palm over the petal and meandered back towards the stream. She walked over a small stone footbridge and wondered how old it was. An inner voice told her she would lose at least another three and a half minutes by doing this. But that voice was getting quieter, fading farther into the back of her mind. Hanako stared at an odd tree trunk next to the stream, gnarled and twisted like a question mark. She'd seen this tree before, when it was much thinner. All at once, Hanako realized she had been to this exact spot before. Hazy snapshots flashed as she leafed through the photo album in her head. Her fifth birthday, a family picnic, bountiful sushi and sweet mitarashi dumplings laid out on a big mat. The laughter of friends and family, dipping her feet in the stream, everyone smiling. This corner of the park had not changed at all since then and that made Hanako immensely happy. It was her special, private piece of Maruyama Park. The red petal had led her here. She had not been to or even thought of this special place for so many years. In fact, she had walked right past it dozens, hundreds of times, over the last few years. Just 200 feet away, beyond the stone walls, on the busy street. Hanako vowed to come to this quiet spot more often, both within the park and within her own mind. Cherry blossom petals blurred across the lights like neon fireflies. Hanako took off her shoes and socks and padded to the stream's edge. The damp grass felt good under her feet. She dipped her toes into the burbling mountain water as she had on her fifth birthday. The water was cool but soothing. 
The feel of the current stroking her feet relaxed Hanako. Hanako opened her hand. The red petal was still there, sitting on her palm. She saw her hand lower the petal to the stream and place it on the surface with care. Hanako leaned back and watched the petal float away. The sound of the stream burbled in her ears. Swirls of foam frothed around the green rocks just below the surface. The petal spun on its own axis for a while, as if uncertain. Then it edged its way out towards the middle of the stream and caught the main current. Hanako watched the red petal ride the dancing rivulets down the stream. It spun and dipped, seemingly in celebration. As it floated away, Hanako lost sight of the petal several times. A breeze sighed overhead, a flurry of dozens and then hundreds of fresh cherry blossom petals were loosened from above. The new petals dotted the surface of the stream until it was more light than dark for a moment. Hanako spotted her red petal one last time amidst the bustle of lighter ones. Then it dipped behind a rock and was gone. Hanako breathed deeply and focused on one point in the river. The cherry blossoms blurred past her eyes. She saw all of them at once, and she also saw none of them. She closed her eyes. The future came to the fore again. What would she do after her final exam? Which path would she take? Future worries cloud. Be like the bold red petal. Let the water guide. Hanako took a deep breath and broke her worries for the future into tiny pieces in her mind. She imagined placing the little pieces onto each individual petal that floated past. In no time at all, the weight on her shoulders was gone. The ticking clock in Hanako's head had been fully silenced. Hanako knew she could return to this stream in the future and give her troubles to the cherry blossoms, gift them to the river, let them go on the wind. If she was far from this stream, far from Kyoto, away from home, she would come to the stream in her mind. She closed her eyes and saw the red petal. She knew she could summon it any time she needed to. It was her totem, her guardian, her tenin. The petal was her butterfly goddess, Izanami no Kami. Hanako appreciated the fact that falling cherry blossoms signified new beginnings. That's what finishing university was. A new beginning. An exciting opportunity to start on a fresh new path in her life. To see the river bend and float down fresh waters, just like her red petal in the stream. Hanako opened her eyes. She was at peace with her situation now, her future. It would all work out. Everything would. There would be ups and downs, highs and lows, strong gusts of wind, but 
she would ride them out, like the petals that skimmed over the top of huge rocks or circled them. She would not be perturbed by the stream. If life put rocks in her path, she would not try to break them. She would float around them. And sometimes, she would let the river decide. Hanako knew she would do well on her exam. She knew the future was hers. The sakura trees shimmered and rattled above in a sharp breeze. Hanako closed her eyes again. She listened to the wind. She heard crickets, frogs, and sleepy magpies chuckling. A wind whistle bird warbled, unseen in the distance. She inhaled the perfumed air and smiled. She was thankful for these ancient trees. They had woken her up from her spiritual hibernation. The falling blossoms had reminded her to look within her culture, to her ancestors, for inspiration when the going got tough. They had gotten her back in touch with the naive curiosity of her youth, which had been clouded by years of hard study. She let her eyes shut anew. Another haiku came into Hanako's mind. Slowly, but without hesitation, she spoke. Time is no matter. Blossoms land and float away. Worries go with them. Hanako opened her eyes halfway and wondered how many flower petals were in the air above right at that instant. There had to be thousands, hundreds of thousands. Perhaps she would count them. She took a deep breath and felt very relaxed indeed. One, two, three, four. The light shone through every petal like the sky was made of shards of shattered stained glass. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. The petals were as infinite as the stars on a clear night. Forty, forty-one. Hanako knew she could never count them all, but at least she had counted some of them. Those petals were hers. She let her eyes fall closed again. Petals like pink stars. No number can count them all. Sleep will be here soon. Hanako felt gratitude for her grandmother and Mrs. Matsui and all her other teachers and ancestors. They had helped guide her, taught her to respect her past. Hanako's thoughts were no longer worried by numbers and formulas. She heard no other sound but the wind clattering the branches and the mesmeric lullaby of the crickets. Hanako felt herself lifting off the ground and floating away like a cherry blossom petal. She spun in the air and landed on the surface of the stream. She felt herself drifting, safe in the water's embrace. Hanako felt calmer than she'd ever been. She stood up and began to walk home at a leisurely pace. She took time to observe and appreciate everything as she walked. There was no need to rush. She would not worry about missing any green lights. Hanako 
also felt no need to rush to the next stage of her life. She would get there at her own pace, like a cherry blossom petal on a gentle river current. I hope you've enjoyed our spring journey to the cherry blossom lined paths of Kyoto. Let your eyes fall closed and breathe deeply. Push yourself further under the blankets and feel the soft fabric with your toes. You are in a warm and safe place. Your worries are gone because you are on the edge of sleep. Feel yourself drift into the land of sleep like a cherry blossom petal floating on a gentle stream. Good night, traveler, and sweet dreams. <laughs>